Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Having a nice relaxing one. It's my day off here with my little pugger. Say hello, little pugger. Hi, buddy. Yeah, he's, uh, he, you know, he's sort of antisocial. Little guy. Doesn't like to say hello. <laughs> um, oh, geez. What's been banging around in my head today? Oh, boy. It's my day off, right? I work a full-time job. I work at a toy store. Uh, I like the job well enough, as jobs go. I've had plenty of them. And working in a toy store, I mean, I recently had a conversation with somebody whose job is getting uh, prescription medicine to people who can't afford it. Uh, and she said to me that what I was doing was good. And that made me feel good about myself. That this person who's doing something that is uh, objectively good for people getting p poor people who can't afford medicine, medicine. That's like, that's like some lawful good stuff right there. That's, that's like paladin cleric kind of stuff. You're, you're casting holy spells. You're helping people for sure doing that. And then that person says to me, you're, you're giving toys to children. Like yeah, that's, that's good work. Makes me feel good. Makes me feel good about myself, but <sighs> I do get thinking, like, I think people work too hard. I think it's weird how, if I recently got promoted, I'm, I'm recently in this position where I have full-time hours, uh, benefits, the whole thing. That's recent. This is a recent phenomenon for me. Um, I hope it stays that way because it makes my life more stable. But I've spent a good deal of my life on the other side of that in the precariat, so to speak, living in that sort of precarious lifestyle where one moment you don't know whether or not you're going to be able to pay your rent, and then the next moment you're feeling decent, you're feeling okay, like you've got a handle on things, and then some small uh, uh, event occurs that, if, if not unforeseeable, certainly has sort of an, an inevitability to it. Like, you get a cavity. If you're living in the precariat and suddenly your tooth starts aching, right, that's like, you gotta hustle and you gotta shuffle together some money. You gotta start making things happen. Either that or you like dip into the savings that you've been making for yourself, right? And, you know, if you're in the precariat, you know, your savings are slow gains, you know, it's small gains. It's not, it's not a big pool of money, but, you know, and having to to dive into that in order to pay for these things. It feels, uh, it's a real downer. And so it makes me think like we, we could do better than this, certainly. Like why is there a whole class of people who are in precarious labor in the first place? It's sort of insane. Why are we allowing this sort of uh, uh, kind of, we're allowing private interests to dictate whether or not people can have even basic stability. You know, and it gets really insane when you get into this conversation about whether or not people should have st stable lives and whether or not the governmental system that supports them has ownership and onus to, uh, uh, to provide stability. And there's like 30% of the populace believes that life should not be stable, that the society should not be stable, that it's up to people to stabilize their own lives, but society can't stabilize itself. There's a good boy, buddy. There's a good boy. We got some other dogs over here, and so he's getting protective, as if something could happen if they came over here. He's a good boy, though. He's a good boy. Aren't you a good boy, buddy? Aren't you the best? Yeah, he's the best boy. He's a good boy. If you're a voting conservative, you, gen you genuinely believe that life should be unstable for lots and lots of people. And not only that, we should actively destabilize their lives even further. That you, you hold this view that if a person is relying on a government institution in order to have stability in their life, that that's somehow a negative. Not only does it show badly on them in a moral sort of sense, it shows badly on us for allowing them to lean on a governmental institution for support. 
if you're a voting conservative, you really are saying uh, that vulnerable people are morally corrupt and societies that help vulnerable people are also morally corrupt. Uh, it's a really despicable worldview that 30% of the society obviously holds and has been galvanized effectively in order to assault the majority of people, uh, in order to make their lives harder, make things more difficult for them. Uh, and I think it's obvious at this point. I don't think we need to play games with this. Here in Ontario, Doug Ford has launched a class war, without a doubt. The class war that he's inflicting on the populace uh, is unprecedented. It's You go back to the Mike Harris years, and Mike Harris was obviously incompetent. He obviously had terrible ideas that didn't manifest beneficially in any way for Ontario. And yet, he, even his lineage is absolutely nothing compared to what these incompetent... I shouldn't call these people incompetent. I think they're very competent. They're very competent thieves. They're very competent at stealing from the populace, from rendering the vulnerable more vulnerable, which is their goal, which is, they, which is what they want. And meanwhile, I, when I'm working in my toy store, and the transition from the precariat to what I am now, which I think is lower middle class, probably at this point, this sort of, not even middle class, not even close, like lower class, this sort of transition, the big reveal for me and the, and the thing that has really been interesting to witness personally is that I, we could adjust things so that life was less precarious for the precariat, for these people who are working in this way. Part of the issue that we're starting to face as a society is that there really actually isn't that much work to go around, you know? What, if we continue automating in the way that we've been automating, if we continue uh, uh, smoothing out things and making life a uh, more streamlined affair, these are very corporate things to say. You're streamlining the process. You're, you're finding synergies. You're, you're creating uh, new connections in order to uh, 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 create efficiencies. Well, if, if the goal of creating these efficiencies isn't to give more time back to the populace, then what are they for? What's the point? But of course, the populace finds itself forced into this position where it has to sell itself to a, a labor market in order to survive. And the labor market doesn't pay a living wage. Uh, or there's these part-time hours, or there's these, all these kinds of nonsense things. Uh, and where it just leads me to is that it, if the private sector is not willing to create stability and create a, uh, a livable environment where everyone is safe and stable and not worried if they're going to get thrown out of their apartment or lose their job or go bankrupt at a moment's notice. If the private sector isn't willing to provide that, then it's up to the public sector to do so, as it's attempted several times in the past. And of course, 30% of the populace, conservatives, believe that we should destroy that idea, that people should be unstable, people should live in precarious uh, uh, situations. It's a stunning belief system, especially held by people who consider themselves at all religious, but it's the fundamental of perspective that they take. And unfortunately, we do find ourselves here in Canada, the left is weak. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a, uh, uh, I don't think it's a mistake that we're trying to face this climate change issue and we have this sort of 
soft, spineless leader in power who is clearly been trained in order to say the right things, but then does absolutely nothing. Or if he does do something, it's so soft and it's so almost irrelevant. Like, ju if Justin Trudeau actually cared about this climate change issue, he would be doing more about it. But he isn't concerned about it. He talks as though he's concerned about it. When he went to, we had a rally here in Toronto, and there were thousands and thousands of people at it. When he shows up to this rally and has a good photo shoot, oh boy, did that photo come out looking nice, right? He's cheering and smiling and walking along with the people. How about you pass some legislation, Justin? How about you go back to the parliament with a piece of legislation that says, we know who's responsible for causing this problem. We know what we have to do to resolve this problem. We're going to do it, and we're going to make the people who are responsible for creating the problem pay for it. And I feel like the counter has always been, well, what about the jobs? Which is what I'm talking about. Well, what about these jobs? There's getting to be less and less of them. There's getting to be less and less work. The work that is available is essentially just making food for one another. We're essentially just making and serving food as the basis of our economy. Or shuffling around little doodads and devices, which is all well and good. People like food. People like shuffling things around. People like little doodads and gadgets. Obviously, I'm talking to you on a little doodad or gadget. And yet, as the basis of our economy, it seems to be mainly exhausting for people. Which is why I 100% endorse the idea of a basic income. I think a basic income resolves a lot of problems and the problems it's cr it creates are fine. This is one thing that I feel like when I see people on the basic income side of the conversation, quote unquote critics of the basic income, although I'm yet to see an actually, an actual rational response to a basic income that takes seriously what it would do for many, many people. The critiques I continue to hear, people will be lazy. There's no evidence for that. In fact, the evidence shows quite the opposite based on the one simple pr principle. If you let people do what they want, they do it with all their heart. And even if I concede that, okay, some people will be lazy uh, because there already are people in capitalism who are quote unquote lazy, sure. Those people already exist, fine. Uh, I don't understand why I should be more concerned about a man sitting on the couch than a man sitting on the street. I don't understand how it is that a person can walk by a man sitting on the street and think to themselves, well, we could help them, but it would mean that they would just be sitting on a couch instead and think to themselves that that's bad. I hope to the core of my being that an individual whose life has brought them to begging on the street I want nothing more for them than the opportunity to sit on a couch in a room playing video games for the rest of their life that seems fine by me because they're not sitting on the street and I don't really understand the critique of the basic income from this angle that says people will be lazy, not only because there's no evidence, but also, so? And, and, and who are you to say when a person is or is not being lazy? Oftentimes when I see capitalists call someone lazy, 
they're talking about people who have two jobs, who are working as hard as they possibly can. And it turns out that what the capitalist means is, oh, they just want to pursue something that doesn't directly benefit me. So that's laziness. To a capitalist, if you're not selling yourself and all of your time to them, you must be lazy. So there's this insipid, uh, uh, unempathetic, sort of sociopathic worldview that exists in this conversation that nobody actually wants to call out. That if you're calling another person's life lazy because they want to rest from being crushed by a system that's designed to exploit them, then I don't know what to say to you anymore. I don't think you're seeing things from the perspective of another individual. I don't think you're reading your Bible. I don't think you're pausing and considering that there might be a worldview outside of your own eyes. That someone's perspective in life might be different than I graduated from university and got a job because my dad is rich. And so, but unfortunately right now the left is a shambles. It, here in Ontario, we have literally a sociopath and a group of sociopaths running the, the province at the moment, doing everything they can to destroy the place. And a, an empty chair that says liberal on it is polling better than these guys. And meanwhile, Andrea Horath of the NDP is, it seems to be completely incognito. I have no idea what she's doing. I have no idea what she's saying. I have no idea what she stands for. I have no idea how she's fighting or what she's doing in the face of all of this. And she should be the person that we're all looking to. Andrea Horath should be the person that we're all looking to and saying, that's the next leader of Ontario and we already should have agreed on it. And I'm not saying that because I'm a dyed-in-the-wool NDP supporter. I vote green. I'm a Green Party man, and honestly, if I could go farther left, I would. Oh, I've lost my little dog. No, I have not. What a stealth. What a stealth move. He does that all the time. He stealths me out. And so I don't see this... Uh, but I don't see her. I don't see her anywhere. I see, uh, uh, I see Doug Ford being an idiot and robbing people, uh, thieving people. His, uh, his, uh, uh, min his minister of education is a liar and a thief uh, and is absolutely in it to steal as much money from children as he can possibly get away with. Um, I don't see any reason for anybody to trust any of these people. Uh, uh, and the Liberals haven't picked a candidate, and they're not going to pick a candidate until the zero hour, because they don't want us to have a moment to actually look at them. To actually be like, oh hey, this Liberal's not that much different than your regular moderate conservative type. I don't understand why we're getting all rah-rah about some empty chair Liberal. When absolutely we should be getting behind Horath based on principle alone. Like, no. This is what we should be saying to these people at this point. No. No, we are not going to continuously fall into this game. We're not going to continuously fall into this game of going to the conservatives when we're mad at the liberals and then the conservatives gut us and then the liberals show up and say, hey, do you want the gutting to stop? So we'll just not gut you anymore. And then they come in, do nothing, sit on it, legislate nothing, make nothing happen, maintain the status quo. And if they do do something, it's like the littlest, tiniest crumb that can possibly be thrown out into the field of people to placate you a little bit so that you won't Hurt, abandon them and allow the demons to come back in and just rip things apart the way they do. Meanwhile, we could just say no. We could just say, 
hey, uh, we're not going to do that anymore because that's a stupid thing to do and it's a stupid position to take. Uh, it's stupid to play into the hands of these politicians who clearly do not care about you. Uh, obviously do not care about you. The, uh, and instead we could vote for anyone. And the obvious person that we should absolutely vote for right now, without a doubt, is Andrea Horath. I, and not even from a policy perspective, just as a way to say to these politicians, we are willing to abandon you. We will do it. And I don't see why we shouldn't abandon these people. They, that, that, that's their whole platform. Their whole platform is to abandon you. That we are being abandoned by these people. They continuously tell you that you should be abandoned. They're continuously formulating arguments and hiring people and throwing money at people whose thesis is you should be abandoned and you should fight for yourself. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't abandon them back. I don't understand why anyone would actually tolerate uh, uh, voting for someone whose policy is, uh, fuck you, I got mine. Like, I don't, I don't understand how the, there's even irrational. I feel like if you were, th if you were thinking logically, you would absolutely abandon them. But I also feel like if you're not thinking logically, that if you're just allowing your fear and your cowardice to lead you, you would abandon them as well. Out of sheer survival, if anything else. Because this is the craziest thing, in my view, about these conservatives. There's not a single person, I shouldn't say a single person, there's probably like 10 billionaires, and obviously themselves. So there's like maybe a hundred people who are actually going to make money out of all of this, out of the conservatives' uh, thievery and lies. Uh, uh, and most of them are billionaires, the rest, and the rest are just Doug Ford and his thuggish friends. I don't understand why we don't see it that way. And, the, and if you're like in the upper middle class, and you're still supporting these guys, I'm just, I have to ask you, why are you so interested in spending more money to receive less service? It just seems to be the case that these guys are sitting there saying, boy, I super cannot wait to spend more money to get less service. And that's what they want. They want to spend more money to get less service. Uh, uh, but at least their taxes are lower, right? Yeah, you spend $400 less in taxes, but your healthcare costs double. Like, are you an idiot? The answer seems to be yes. Oh yeah, you're, you're, you, you, you get this, you get $400 back on your tax return. Good for you, buddy. Congratulations. Oh yeah, uh, uh, sorry, we had, to, we had to raise the cost on, uh, uh, we had to put a toll in on this road over here. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, if you wanna use it, you gotta pay for it, right? Oh yeah, of course that's going to cost double the amount that you were paying previously, but you know, uh, uh, my buddy Steven's got a daughter to put through college, so let's hop to it. This is, this is the Conservative Party in a nutshell. I mean, Andrew Scheer did it to his own party, for God's sake, right? The Conservatives are all upset about it, and they're all mad, and I'm like, what, what's your problem? Like, Andrew Scheer just did to you guys what you plan to do to everybody else, which is fleece them, right? They're not... They're not good people. They're not interested in, in doing anything good. Like, their position is that we should steal from the populace. Uh, it's, that's period. Like, and they're really, really upfront about it. Once you realize that, like, when someone says private people or a private source, right? Once you put the face to that pr private source and you realize that it's a pirate, like every time someone is arguing in favor, of pri in favor of private institutions, just picture it being done by Jack Sparrow and other pirates who are coming to plunder you because that's their position. They're upfront about that, that they want to insert worthless middlemen into the process. They want to make sure that money is funneled away from the public sector and goes into the hands of their buddies, whose job, incidentally, 
becomes finding ways to deny service to you to pay for them. That's their riff. They want to raise the price of the item in question and then find ways to deny service. And both of those things exist only to pay for their existence. So if you just eliminated them, lowered the price, and stopped denying service, everything would be fine because you've gotten rid of the worthless middleman. But I'm supposed to buy into this idea that, oh, the private sector can do it better. That's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Like, we could outright just mandate and just say, hey, every citizen just gets a certain amount of money. No, we're going to cap rent. We're going to cap we're going to cap prices. We're going to make sure that nobody is uh, uh, getting left out of the loop. Everyone's going to get some money and everything's going to be fine. You're just going to live your life uh, uh, st in a stable environment. Uh, anyway, I could, I could go off on rent control, but that's, a, that's another talk. Uh, I'm good. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day off. I hope you're enjoying the rest of your day. Love you all. Have fun.